As Angelica said, Michael Richmond, I'm the Senior Director for Platform Infrastructure at Bitly. Um, I've been there for 13 plus years. Um, we're hiring, come find me. Can ChatGPT do, do, Chat do my job? So I needed to give it an assignment. I needed to give somebody on my teams an assignment. Nobody was available to do it. So I wanted to know whether I could actually have ChatGPT do it. What is that assignment? Pretty simple. I wanted it to write a Go program that reads Microsoft Event Hub events and converts them to NSQ events. For those of you who don't know, uh, Azure events are basically JSON objects that you can consume in an asynchronous process. NSQ events are the same thing of a different flavor. Uh, spoiler alert, that's actually an um, open source project that we did at Bitly in uh, 2014, 15. Go look at the first GopherCon. We actually did a presentation there um, from 10 years ago on it. Has that been 10 years? I don't know. Anyway, go find it. Uh, so Azure Event Hub to NSQ. Pretty simple, right? You probably also all have interacted with ChatGPT. It starts off with like, oh yeah, I can do it. Uh, we'll ignore the fact that there are go-gets here um, because ChatGTP is back in 2022. Um, at first blush, the first pass I get, it's go, it looks okay, it's a little simplistic. There are some things that I want to do differently, so let's dive into the start of the back and forth with ChatGPT, which you're probably all pretty familiar with at this point. So at first I wanted to make a couple of uh, changes like changing const variables to flags, no problem. I wanted to parse the event data that comes in from event hubs into an interface. Okay, it can do that. Uh, I wanted to populate the NSQ message with fields from event data. I've got a typo in here, you'll notice. It didn't bother ChatGPT at all, that's fine. It introduced structs, which I used the word struct. In the end, I actually told it not to do that, but we'll get to that. Back and forth that you're familiar with, right? I want the fields, the fields aren't going to be known, so I said, hey, you can't use a struct. Let's go back to interfaces. It did that. What follows is a series of other instructions that I gave it. Uh, things that I wanted to massage this very fundamental simplistic program to do, like adding a timestamp field, and if the event data has timestamp, use it to overwrite the one that I would do. Add an ID field with UUID random. Add an action field that's read from the command line flags. Show me the whole thing. Add a loggers package. Add logging. Um, take note of this bottom one, uh, handle term signals. I asked it to handle term signals. It added that. Put a pin in that, because we'll come back to that later. That's handling things like sig kill, sig term, things like that. Um, so here's the whole thing. After the, the first run, it's about 130 so lines of code. It did everything I asked it to do. So let's do a build. This is my first build of this one. Uh, not bad. There are some build errors. One interesting thing is that this is GPT-4. I tried this a couple months ago with GPT-3.5, and it was completely different. It got into a build error loop that it could not get out of. This one was much better. A couple of build errors is, in fact, just one. It used an alias and then didn't use that alias later, which is weird. Um, so I said, I fed the errors back in. I said, here are the errors. It fixed them or it tried. It went to a generic V3 name. I, said, I told it to use the alias and fix the way it used it. It did. OK, pretty good. But here's where some weird things started to happen. I continued to iterate on this program. I wanted it to move the flag variables into the main function to follow con for conventions that I use. Good. But wait a minute. What is this? Look at this import block. What on earth happened here? I said that. Why did you change the import order? Oh, my mistake. This is the first of a long series of apologies, by the way, from ChatGPT. <laughs> OK, so fix the import order. That looks better. Um, you have to iterate over all partitions for Microsoft uh, Azure events. It added that. Cool. Uh, then I said, show me the full thing. And then suddenly, I noticed something. Down at the bottom, which is covered by the uh, text, you can't see it, but it reintroduced something that I actually asked it to do differently before. So I said, hey, as this was a test, you just did something. Do you know what it is? This is a test. It tried one guess. It was wrong. I said, no, it has to do with NSQ message you introduced as a struct. It says, I see what you're saying, blah, blah, blah. And I told it what the problem was. You demoted the, the member variables down to a sub variable. OK, it's going to fix it. I pointed out how the fix was actually a bug and it suggested how to fix it. Great. OK, we're back on track. Now, uh, I made some other suggestions, moving uh, variables from context, context to an application struct. 
But wait, what is this? Suddenly a different package is introduced. We were using standard lib flag, this introduced p flag. I said, why on earth did you switch to p flag? Oh, I apologize again. Okay, what's my time? 143, good. So here's the full code. Let's see. I also noticed that, oh my god, you reintroduced the data as a subvariable and you undid the progress we made. Oh, I'm sorry again, right? Okay, so fine, we fixed that. Uh, now, here again, I have to say, my friend, do you not remember that we were iterating over partitions? Please bring that back. Okay, it brings that back. And then I said, this is interesting. You added weight groups, which wasn't present in the first iteration over partitions. So I said, uh, you added weight groups. I'm happy to see it. Why did you not include it before? And then it tries to like butter me up with uh, flattery. Fine. Then I would like to point out that, oh yeah, I have one minute left. You dropped signals. Let me go forward here because I had other things that I needed to say, hey, bring back doc strings. Boom, the program's complete. It builds happiness, right? Well, you're kind of pain in the ass, but it looks like we got a working program. Good, apologies again. Now, what are the takeaways? Number one, 136 lines of code. There's about 40 instructions. Was it faster than writing from scratch? Do I write anything from scratch? Does anybody write anything literally from scratch anymore? Probably not. Do I have 30 seconds? I can do it because I have two slides left. I'll slow down. Pros and cons, here's some thoughts. Gen AI, definitely a powerful coding helper, <clears throat> but needs a lot of massaging. Can't be trusted to just write good code. Can introduce changes that have not been requested. Can reintroduce the mistakes that have previously been undone. So, can ChatGPT do my job? Definitely not. Thanks. <laughs>